So, how many people here like to online shop or pay bills online? Now, this is modern convenience that is only made possible through cryptography. You wouldn't want to send off your information somewhere unsafe, so cryptography makes sure that your information stays confidential. Now, as a mathematician and computer scientist, um, I'm super interested in these algorithms. They're very neat and basically all based in mathematics. Um, as an online shopper, on the other hand, it comforts me to know that my information is going to be safe when I do online transactions. So, to be familiar with the subject of cryptography, we're going to look at the history, the modern algorithms, and the applications of these algorithms. Now, today's crypto systems are essentially based off of algorithms that were developed thousands of years ago. So, it would only make sense to look at the history a little bit and kind of see how these algorithms were formed. Now, the first algorithm that was ever, I guess, recorded is called the Caesar Cipher. Now, it was used in the Roman Empire to send messages um, on horseback across long distances. That way, if they were ever received, they would just look like jumbles, not anything specific. So how this works is there is a key that is just one numerical letter, or sorry, a number, and say we want to send this secret message, hey. How we do that is we would just shift each one of these letters over however many num letters our key is. So for example, P would be shifted over three letters to S. Now I would be shifted over to L and G would be shifted over to J. Now this method isn't exactly secure simply because there aren't enough keys. Someone could easily test all 26 possible keys and they would break your code. So this another type of substitution algorithm was invented. Now this is called a monoalphabetic substitution and it's kind of like those little decoder rings you have as a child. Basically each letter is assigned to a different letter. So it would use a substitution table for example. Now if we wanted to send the secret message cat we would just look up C maps to T a maps to H, and T is going to map to E. Now, we could send someone the secret message the, and they wouldn't know that it actually means cat. The only problem with this algorithm, though, is that you have to carry around a big substitution table, and no one really wants to do that. So that's why the vinaigrette ciphers were created. Now, how these ciphers work is basically you use a simple word or phrase as your key. So for example, say our key is dog. Since D is the fourth letter in the alphabet, whatever message we want to send, we would simply, the first letter, we would shift over four spaces. So G would map to K. Now the second letter, we would use the position of the second letter of our key to map. So O is the 15th letter, so O would map to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, D. Now A, we would use G to map it, seven spaces, and T, we would just wrap around back to D and use that. Now, these are actually very secure, but the only problem is you would have to change your key for every single message. Actually, if you make the key the same size as whatever message you're trying to send, that's when it's called a one-time pad and it has absolute security. Mean, which basically means it's impossible to break, no amount of cryptanalysis can recover what your message was unless they knew the key. But the only problem is these are really impractical, you'd have to have a very long key and a new one for each message. Now, on the, the next kind of branch of ciphers are called transposition ciphers. And what it does basically are it transfers, like shuffles up whatever letters you have. So for example, say our key was 213. Now how this would work is say we were trying to encode the word hippo. What we do is we write 21321 on top of the word. And we would collect all the ones and write them first. So for example, we'd write I and O. Then we would write the twos, H and P. And then we would write the threes, which is P. Now, all of these methods here are very commonly used in 
are modern crypto systems. Basically, how they do it is they use combinations of these systems, and they also complexify them by making the keys and the messages longer. Now, these current crypto systems are, that are used today fall into two different categories. The first category is a symmetric key algorithm, which basically both the sender and the receiver will have two identical keys that are exactly the same. Now, then, um, this method is actually very compatible with large messages. Um, all this stuff is very efficient within computer hardware, so you can send huge messages. The only problem with this type of cryptanalysis is basically that if I want to send a secret key to someone I've never met, it's really hard to do unless I have a different key that they already know. Now, examples of these crypto systems are triple DES, AES, Skipjack, Two Fish and Circuit. Now, on the other hand, public key algorithms are basically what they use to send symmetric keys. These are very efficient for only short messages. Now, basically how it works is I will have a private key that only that I can use to decrypt stuff and I will give everyone my public key. Now everyone can decrypt can encrypt stuff with the public key. Sorry, with the public key, yes. And I will be the only one who is able to decrypt those messages. So examples of this system are RSA, Algamal, and elliptic curve cryptography. Now these are very amazing, very math heavy systems, but what are they good for? There are actually several areas of, of cryptography. The first one is information integrity, which basically just makes sure that your message is not changed in root, or basically whatever you send is received by the other person. This is done by the use of hash algorithms and message digests. The next area of cryptanalysis is called authentication. You want to make sure that the person that you received a message from is who they say they are and you want to make sure that you sent your message to the correct person. This is done by digital signatures, certificates, and challenge responses. The last area is called confidentiality, which is probably the area everyone is most familiar with. You want to make sure that unauthorized parties do not read your information, especially in emails, webs, web communication, databases, and password control. So, in conclusion, Cryptography can be applied to all sorts of areas to keep our data safe in several different ways. Thousands of years worth of advancements have gone into developing this technology to protect our information. So the next time you buy something, pay a bill, or manage your bank accounts online, you can rest easy knowing that there's cryptanalysis that's going to keep your information safe. Thank you for your time, and here's my audience.